happy little games. This video is a special request by Patreon supporter Bodus Hotfa. Thank you so much for the support and hopefully you enjoy the video. Little Boys and Their Guns When I was growing up, whenever I would play Cowboys and Indians, I would always have to be a cowboy just so I could have that six shooter strapped to my side. When I got old enough, my parents bought me a BB gun and since I was the first one in the neighborhood to get one, I was the cock of the walk. Shooting cans and various other things were absolutely fantastic so as I got older, my love for shooting guns and video games just so happened to merge together. There were various light gun games in the 1980s with some of my favorites being Crossbow. <laughs> Operation Wolf. And Hogan's Alley. And while they were fun enough back in the day, they weren't quite realistic enough for me. Unless of course you count Chiller which is a little bit too realistic. In 1992, Konami decided to dip their toes into the light gun market and release the highly successful Lethal Enforcers. This two-player light gun extravaganza provided simultaneous multiplayer madness as well as a little bit of violence. What does this game in Mortal Kombat have in common? What character inspired this arcade game? So put on your best snarl and get ready to save the day. Go ahead. Make my day. Because this is the history of Lethal Enforcers. The year is 1991 and Konami designer Yoshihiro Hatano is once again looking to the west for inspiration on his next arcade game. Mr. Hatano had wanted to do a light gun game for some time but hadn't quite decided upon the theme. The higher-ups at Konami were favorable to this idea as this was one of the areas they hadn't really covered during their rise to fame. Any arcade enthusiast would know the name Konami and the hits they have graced us with over the years. It's amazing what their back catalog consists of with titles including Contra, Frogger, Circus Charlie, Radius and Castlevania to name but a few. Just like a lot of other Konami designers, and to be honest, a lot of other game designers from Japan as well, inspiration was often taken from the big Hollywood movies at the time. Mr. Hatano had loved action cinema with one particular character being his favorite and that was Dirty Harry. He was a fan of the entire series of movies, especially how in the end justice would be served to each and every nefarious criminal that Harry came across thanks to his giant Smith & Wesson gun. Mr. Hatano didn't want to do a cartoony light gun game but something much more realistic and felt that Dirty Harry was the perfect inspiration. He happened to come across pictures of an upcoming fighting game called Mortal Kombat, which featured digitized characters and blood. He knew his game could be nowhere near as gory as Mortal Kombat, but perhaps a little bit of blood with a little bit of violence mixed in here and there wouldn't be that big of a deal. He had to convince his bosses that this was the way to go and thankfully they agreed. Initially, Mr. Hatano wanted to do something similar to Mad Dog McCree with full motion video only set in the present day but his bosses declined. A standard light gun shooter with digitized sprites was agreed upon and the locale was to be a major American city. Lethal Enforcers blasted into the arcades in 1992. This is a simultaneous one or two player light gun game in which you get to deal out a special brand of justice to every criminal that pops up on the screen. You take on the role of Beat Cop Chicago Police Officer Don Marshall, who is attempting to take down a major crime syndicate that is trying to take over the city. Your initial weapon is a standard 38 revolver which only holds six shots, but there are various other weapons to be picked up along the way. 
These include an automatic, assault rifle, shotgun, machine gun, and a grenade gun. The machine gun and grenade gun cannot be reloaded, but all of the other ones can be. To reload your weapons, you have to aim off the screen and press the fire button. Depending on how the arcade operator has it set up, you start with either between 3 to 5 units of health. The game consists of 6 levels with 3 sub-levels including a boss fight at the end of each one. In between certain stages there are training levels which are basically target practice. If you shoot exceptionally well, you can gain extra health points. Not only do you have to have a quick trigger finger throughout the game, but you have to be careful of all those crazy innocent citizens walking back and forth. They will warn you of their presence by shouting out phrases such as, Don't shoot! And, I don't want to die! Among others. If you do manage to shoot them, you will lose a health point. Also, if you have an upgraded weapon and you take a hit, you will lose that weapon. If you take a hit, there is a huge bullet hole on your side of the screen surrounded by blood. Police officers will also slide in from the sides attempting to take out the bad guys, so be careful not to shoot them. To help you in your quest, all the bad guys will wear either sunglasses, gas masks, or ski masks. The police officers and civilians are always barefaced. After each level provided you don't shoot any civilians, you will rank up. You start as a lowly patrolman and if you are quite the marksman, you can attain commander status. There are two types of modes depending on the dip switch settings. The first one is arcade mode which is non-linear and you have to follow the stages in order or street mode in which you are able to select the level you want. The five levels, not counting the training stages, include the bank robbery, Rifle. You miss me, big. Me. Ah. Chinatown Assault, ah. Hijacking, The Drug Dealers. And finally, Chemical Plant Sabotage. At the start of each level, there are even four digitized animated clips showing the upcoming action. The backgrounds look nice and there are plenty of variety throughout each of the levels. The bosses start out manageable, but by the time you get to the last one, it is a complete nightmare. Don't worry though, Konami has got you covered with you being able to insert more moolah to continue. The difficulty isn't as bad as say Terminator 2, but it's no cakewalk either and definitely easier with the second player. There were some regional differences between this game and its Japanese counterpart. The phrase Die Pig was removed from the American version. There were two types of guns made available for the arcade game. The 38 revolver which initially shipped with the machine and then later on it was replaced with an automatic. In 1993, congressional hearings led by Senators Joel Lieberman and Herb Cole went after realistic violent video games. The games that were mentioned were Mortal Kombat, Night Trap, and Lethal Enforcers with this depiction of lifelike gun violence using a realistic weapon. Several key members of the industry including representatives from both Nintendo and Sega testified. Senator Cole was quoted as saying, if you don't do something about this, we will. This was the creation of the ESRB, or Entertainment Software Ratings Board, which would preside over all published video game content. The game was a huge success and there were a few home conversions released as well. 
As usual, I will get to them at the end of the video. In 1994, Lethal Enforcers 2 Gunfighters was released in the arcades. The game takes place in a dusty local yokel town in 1873, where you take on the role of a lowly gunfighter who is trying to stop the dastardly varmints from taking over. You start the game with a standard six shooter, but you can find various weapon upgrades throughout the levels. Some of the weapons you can acquire are 50 caliber bullets, rifles, gatling guns, and cannons. All of the weapons can be reloaded by shooting off screen just like in the first game except for the gatling guns and cannons, which can only be used once. If you are shot while holding one of your upgraded weapons, you will lose it. You have to take out each and every filthy bad guy while avoiding all of the innocents who occasionally run across the screen. Similar to the first game, there are five levels with a target practice stage mixed in. The five stages you will encounter are the bank robbery, the stage holdup, saloon showdown, The Train Robbery And finally, The Hideout If you are an excellent shooter and don't kill any of those pesky civilians, then you can level up. The ranking system is Posse, Deputy, Sheriff, Deputy Marshal, and all the way up to U.S. Marshal. The graphic quality stayed pretty much the same from the first game with perhaps slightly better animation. We do get some nice 1873 western themed music in the background which adds to the overall experience. I really enjoyed this game, even more so than the first one. I love the level designs, especially on the stage holdup level. The game was released for the Sega Genesis and Sega CD in 1994, and later on as a part of the Lethal Enforcers Combo Pack for the PlayStation 1. Before we talk about Lethal Enforcers 3, I need to bring up its spiritual prequel. Police 911 was a series of arcade on-rail light gun shooters from Konami that saw its first release in the year 2000. The unique feature about this game was its interactivity. Instead of other standard light gun games where you just stand still and shoot the enemies, this one requires you to move around to dodge bullets. If you don't move around, you will die. There are infrared sensors placed at the top of each machine to determine where the player is standing. You have to move side to side to take cover and duck down to not only take cover but to reload your weapon. This works surprisingly well and I'm surprised more companies didn't use this technology when it came to arcade games. Lethal Enforcers 3 was released in 2005 and is the final installment in the series. This is another simultaneous two-player light gun shooter, but instead of digitized sprites, the game uses 3D polygon graphics. The game takes place in real-life locations based in Tokyo, Japan. One unique aspect of this game is that you play as six different law enforcement officials in various missions, including a Tokyo police officer, Japan Coast Guard officer, detective, special assault team operative, and an SAT operative among others. The game has checkpoints in which you have to shoot the various criminals as fast as you can. Similar to past games, there are weapon upgrades to be found such as submachine guns, shotguns, sniper rifles, and assault rifles. If you point your gun off screen, you will raise your shield, which will stop you from advancing further, but it does protect you from enemy fire. 
Another cool new feature is that players can now compete against each other in terms of making it to the checkpoint first. The person who does gets a healthy point bonus at the end of the level. The five levels you will encounter are Cops in the City, Port Invader, Rival Heat, Airport 2004, Justice and Judgment, and the last level simply titled Lethal Enforcers 3. The polygon graphics are fantastic and so are the level designs. It's very cool shooting it out in real world locations. The game was never ported to any system so the only way to play it is to rig it up on MAME or try the actual arcade machine. I do know that Galloping Ghost in Chicago does have it. Wow. In 1992, Konami released Lethal Enforcers for the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis. Each version of the home game came with a just-a-fire gun which really brought the arcade experience home, but it also increased the price of the game. Only one light gun was included, but you could purchase a second one straight from Konami which is quite the collector's item these days. The first conversion we are looking at is the Super Nintendo version. The entire arcade presentation is here, if a little bit on the small side. The colors are a bit washed out and everything has a dithered look to it. There are also missing frames of animation. The voices sound pretty clear, although quite a few are missing from the arcade game. The music is only average at best, but overall it's not too bad. Control wise, you have two options. You can use the big bad justifier, or if you have misplaced it, you can always use the controller which has an on-screen crosshair. I tried playing it both ways back in the day and the gun seemed very responsive. The controller method seemed a little bit too laggy for my liking, but those without the justifier will have to make do. The speed of the gameplay is also slightly slower than the arcade game. If you do want to use it on real hardware with a real justifier, make sure you use it on an old CRT television. The newer screens will not work. There were some differences between this and the arcade game. All blood has been removed from the game. Level 2's Chinatown Assault name was changed to Downtown Assault. Level 4's The Drug Dealer name was changed to The Gun Runners. Any and all references to police officers being identified as a pig have also been removed. Also released at the same time was the Sega Genesis version. Similar to the Super Nintendo, this one came with a justifier which definitely feels like you are playing the arcade game at home. If the arcade game had been laying out in the sun for the last 38 days. If you thought the dithering and color loss was bad on the Super Nintendo then don't even bother trying this one out. Audio wise I enjoyed the music on this one more and it even includes a few extra voice clips as well. It's just too bad that they don't sound very clear. The frames of animation that were missing in the SNES port seem to have been restored and that includes the animation in the cutscenes. Gameplay is very similar although this conversion is a bit faster. This version does feature the arcade presentation in all of its uncensored glory including the blood and the correct names for each level. The Sega CD version looks identical to the Genesis but with much better music and all of the voice samples included. Help me. 
In 1997, Lethal Enforcers 1 and 2 was released as a combo pack for the PlayStation 1. This was compatible with any number of third-party light guns, so if you happen to have one lying around, then you're in luck. This is very close to being arcade perfect. The visuals are nice and crisp with none of the dithering found in the 16-bit versions. The animation is on par with the arcade game and the sound effects are fantastic with loud gunshots and crystal clear voice samples. The speed of the gameplay is arcade perfect along with essentially everything else. The arcade presentation is here in its uncensored form. Lethal Enforcers was not only a mega hit in the arcades, but it would go on to be influential in the arcade light gun genre for years to come. Time Crisis, Virtual Cop, and Police Trainer all have their roots in this game. The game is definitely a classic and deserves to be tried at least once. So if you ever see that big double wide cabinet out in the wild, grab that revolver and do your best Dirty Harry impression. You'll be glad you did. If you like this video and want to support me on Patreon, please click the link below. Also, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching.